This is the Renault Capture, and it really caught the imagination of the public. Why have I got a net over me? You've been captured. Get it? Right. Yeah, when it was first released back in 2013. You know, it was one of the first small SUVs, and as a result, it's Renault's best-selling car in the UK. It's also one of the best-selling small SUVs in Europe, and yeah, you can see why. The only problem is lots of brands are now doing these small SUVs, so Renault has had to give this car a midlife facelift, and that has included some new front and rear bumpers, fresh lights, some extra options, and some improved interior trim. So the Renault Capture, it starts from £15,500, but if you go to carmo.co.uk, you can get it from £13,000. So click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or on the link below the video to go to carwow.co.uk to see how much you can save on a new car. Now the Capture is based on the Clio. However, because it's taller, it's more practical. As a result, its boot isn't actually that much smaller than the larger Megans. Now, I can actually make it bigger than the Megans by this neat little trick. Look, if I pull this lever, I can slide the seats forward. Look at that. That's quite clever, isn't it? Okay, so if you want to carry much, much more things, you can fold down the seat backs like this. Then you're thinking, wait a minute, that's like a huge ledge there, isn't there? And also you've got this load lip, but don't you worry because you get this false boot floor. So actually what I'll do, I'll just slide this back again like that and then slide this in. And then look, no load lip, a flat. So you can easily slide stuff in like that. Now let's move on to the back seats. So now I'll just slide this back out of the way to show you how much room there is, or maybe there isn't, in the back of this car. So, well, look at this straight from the get-go. Legroom is very good. This seat is in my driving position, and I've got loads of legroom, so I could, if I wanted to, drive along with more boot space, even with me in the back. Now, the minor issue is this. If I step dead straight, you'll see the headroom is a bit tight for me. I'm 179 centimetres, so someone over six foot, someone over like 181 centimetres is going to find it a bit cramped back here, but kids will be more than fine, and you could carry three kids in the back if you want to, because actually this middle seat isn't too bad, and the footwells are large enough, even though there's a bit of a hump in the floor, but yeah, for adults, it's going to be a bit narrow, this cabin, for three abreast at once, but it's all right. There's some all right sized door bins, which can hold a moderate sized bottle, and there's another little cup holder just down here, though. Yes, that's going to tip over if anyone accelerates. Now for more information on this car's practicality, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to watch my detailed practicality video, see how much you can stuff into this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and just what it's like with three people in the back. So let's move on to the front. Now like I explained before, Renault has tried to overhaul the interior with some improved cabin materials. So look, we've got soft touch materials here on the dash and on the top of the door trims. If you're in a Seattle Rona or an even a Volkswagen T-Roc, this would be hard, brittle plastic everywhere. So yeah, in some ways it seems quite posh, but lower down, of course, there's brittle plastic. So it does feel sturdy. Look at that. I can't shake that center console. It feels rock solid. But in other places, it's a little bit more miss than hit. For instance, look at this, this armrest here. Look at that. Look at that. That's going to break, isn't it? I mean, it's flimsy. It's horrible. It's ugh. And that's kind of the story of this car's interior. It's a bit weird. In some ways I like it, in other ways I don't. I mean, look at the dash design. It's kind of cool and funky in some ways, then a bit blobby in others. I'm not a big fan of the driving dials either. They're just a little bit childish and, hmm, yeah. Let's quickly talk about cubby spaces. So the door bins, they're an all right size. You've got a little space down here for your mobile phone with USB input and 12 volt socket charging there as well. Look, we've got a little place for your sunglasses up there and, some extra storage on there and some storage in this the rattly little armrest. There's one I haven't mentioned and I'll come back to that later. Now this particular car is the Dynamic S model and it's the one you want. It's got pretty much all the kit you really need. So you get satellite navigation, you get rear parking sensors and importantly, you get a leather steering wheel. I say importantly because that is a part of the car you touch and just the normal steering wheel feels a little bit cheap. This car actually starts from £19,500, but I plugged the details of this Dynamic S into CarWow and I got an offer back 
for £16,000, so it's pretty decent value. I should point out though, this particular car has a few options on it, so it's got the upgraded infotainment system with TomTom Tom navigation, which is a little bit better. It also includes Android Auto, so you can hook up your Android phone to it, though bizarrely, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, so that's a lot of mobile phone users alienated right there. This car also has the optional panoramic sunroof, and that is one of the new upgrades on this car. Now, moving back to the satellite navigation system, actually, because this upgraded one, it is, it's all right, you know, it's, it's easy enough to use. The screen isn't the most responsive and the graphics are a little bit dull, but it does its job well enough. My only real problem with it is probably the location. It maybe just seems a little bit too low down. So when you're driving along, you're having to look down there to get your Navi information. But if you want more detail on this car's infotainment system, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to see my full in-depth video review of it. This Renault Capture is a pretty good car for just milling around town. One of the main reasons, of course, is because you're sitting up high and it does feel quite elevated, the seating position, so you get a good view forward. If you the back's good as well. What's not so good is this. Look, there's that huge blind spot there. They've tried to get around it by having this little extra window there, but things can get lost behind there, which is a bit annoying. Another thing when you're driving around town is when you have to make a lot of gear changes because the gear shift is just a little bit rubbery it's not too bad and the manual gearbox is definitely better than the auto try to avoid the auto it's not that good really what is good is the suspension over bumps i mean it does a great job of dealing with bumps it's nice and soft and squidgy this car now if you do lots of motorway miles steer clear of the 900 cc engine the entry level one because it's just too slow the one in this car is probably the one you want 1.2 litre turbo petrol so it's nippy enough 0 to 60 in under 10 seconds and when you put your foot down it does pull okay when you're at motorway speeds economy wise it's supposed to do 51 miles per gallon but i'm getting just under 39 so if you do lots and lots of miles get one of the 1.5 litre diesels they're actually pretty good and give decent economy now one thing you'll notice if you do long distances in this car is that you do get a little bit of tire noise and wind whistle but it's not overly obtrusive one thing you will notice if you hit a twisty road though is that this thing while it goes around corners it doesn't really like spirited driving if you hit a bump mid corner the car suddenly loses its composure as if it's surprised like oh what was that and it skips sideways slightly so yeah it can feel a little bit loose and ungainly at times now then it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car these weird bungee cords are a supposedly cool replacement for a normal boring map pocket, but yeah, kids in the back are gonna end up doing this, aren't they? And driving you mad for the whole journey. Ah. Also, you can get yourself captured in them. For some reason, the switch to turn on the cruise control or the speed limiter is down here by the gear lever, not on the steering wheel where it should be. I've never really known a seat recliner to be on this side of the chair and it's quite awkward to get to on the driver's seat with this blooming armrest in the way. Oh, that's hurt my wrist. The little cup holder here in the back is just so shallow that if you accelerate or brake, yeah, your drink's gonna go everywhere. Oop. Don't worry, it's just a bit of water. Not dry. Normally, on most cars, the fuse box is on the same side as the steering wheel, but not on the Renault Capture. They've decided to put it in the glove box for right-hand drive cars. So the glove box is actually half the size as it would be on a left-hand drive car. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. If little Timmy has an upset stomach and a nasty accident in the back of the car, don't worry. Look, you can unzip the seat covers and remove them, and then just put them in the wash. Just like a proper big SUV, this car has gas struts to hold open the bonnet. Not some piddly little brace. You can get a seven speaker Bose sound system, which is really loud and really clear. The doors extend all the way over the sill, which means that when you open the door, you can see the sill is always clean. So you don't get your legs dirty if you rub on them when you get in or out of the car. There's Isofix for a baby seat in the front passenger seat so you can keep your baby nice and close to you. Oh, your breath stinks. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can see how much you can save on a Renault Capture at carway.co.uk or any car for that matter. So then what's my verdict on it? Should you 
avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Renault Capture. It's a cool looking small SUV. The only problem is, is that there's many other alternatives out there now, which are actually better to drive. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the croissant in the Capture's cubby. Yes, the Renault Capture is so French that its storage bins are perfect for French pastries. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. Click on our logo to subscribe to this channel, on the window to watch another video, or on the click to buy to see how much you can save on a new car.